and it's recording. Great. So I posted the Etherpad that has the agenda on the in the chat. You can see that. And yeah, to, today we're going to talk mostly about the C4 uh, specification. But I just wanted to give an update on the status of the array tag and the C4 sequence. So as Kasten was telling us, um, the status of the C4 array tag is Announcement approved announcements to be sent and point raised, so it's waiting on a new version. And then Alexei will have to press the button, I guess, to um, to to send it to the RFC editor. And the Cibor sequence status uh, actually, when I set the agenda, was announcement to be sent. Now the announcement has been sent, and it's in the RFC editor. So congratulations on getting it there. And um, uh, something I noted is that Ariana is still not okay, so it's still waiting on the designated expert review, I guess. Alex sent a review, I think. Alex sent a review, okay. So Alex is a uh, um, secondary part uh, okay. on, on this. Mm -hmm. So do we need to poke someone? I think Klaus is back now from vacation. Or maybe we need to find Alex review was was let's say slightly flawed. <laughs> and uh, um I'm I'm not sure that Ayana can can actually process things based on that, but um it, it's pretty clear that he agreed. Uh, to what is in the document. Okay, yeah. So I think they really just have to check the document and, and uh, so generate nothing... this usual, we are going to do X, Y, Z mail, and then the authors reply to, yes, that's exactly what we want. And then we, uh, it will go from not okay to okay. Okay, yeah. So nothing we need to do to find uh, this in an expert review and Oh, that we just let you and Diana deal with it. Right. right. I mean, if nothing happens for a week, then maybe we should look again. But uh, to me, it looks like we're going to normal. Yeah, nothing is blocking right now, at least. Yeah. Okay, good. Great. So we can talk about the C specification. And Kasten had a lot of pull requests he wanted to go through. So, oh. Let's... Right, so maybe I should try to share my browser. Oh, uh, I have to change the role to presenter, maybe. Yeah, I'm, I'm using the wrong browser for taking notes. So I think I've seen some juggling here. Okay, can you see the screen? I can see something, it's all black. Ah, doing that again, okay. You can fix that. Better now? Now it's here, yes. Yeah, so it's still doing the same thing. It sometimes doesn't. I really would like to know when it does that and when it doesn't. Okay. No, we, we're having a little CI problem at the moment. Um, so we are, we are not just having a current editor's copy. I hope to be able to fix that. It seems that the uh, official Martin Thompson template went to Docker now, and I probably just have to put in the Docker stuff, and then everything will work again. 
Um, okay, so we have 16 issues and, and six pull requests. I probably should mention that I have uh, closed um, one issue, uh, the, the get rid of follows terminology uh, thing. Um, I think we are done there. Um, so if uh, um, you find anything where we still uh, talk about the, the enclosed data item following a tag, uh, please tell me, but I think we are done uh, there. So I think this can be uh, closed and that's why I did close it. Now on the other issues, there are some that now have a label has PR. And uh, let's look into the pull requests. So Lawrence had provided um, a proposed appendix with uh, test vectors for not well formed CBOR. Uh, and um, I, I had a bit of, uh, of trouble with that uh, for a number of reasons. But I think the main reason was that um, this didn't really go into courses for uh, non well formedness. Uh, so I actually wrote some text for that in, in pull request 114. And I also reformatted uh, things considerably so they are much shorter and maybe even easier to uh, access programmatically. Uh, so you can now extract those uh, test vectors from uh, that, that section. Um, so I went ahead and described the, the three reasons why you are not well formed. You might have too much data, and that's not always an error because uh, uh, the application may actually use the self-delimiting uh, feature. So it may be intended there is, uh, that there is more uh, data. Uh, you may have too little data. Uh, which uh, even also might not be a, a problem of because you cannot cannot uh, derive a decoded uh, seaboard data item with uh, too little data, but uh, it, it may not be fatal, but it may just mean we have to wait for uh, more input bytes. I have to obtain more input bytes by reading them from some something. Uh, so um, it, it's pretty much trivial to do test vectors for too much data. It actually is trivial to do some for too little data, but it's worth creating some that have preposterous size values in them to make sure these are also uh, correctly handled. And then this, there is the third one uh, where we have an actual syntax error. And if you want to have an exhaustive list of the syntax errors, you actually can look into the pseudocode. And uh, the pseudocode has five kinds of syntax errors, uh, which are listed here in the, the sequence where they occur in the pseudocode. And based on that, we can now go into examples. And the examples are uh, structured in exactly the same way. So um, yeah, there are no examples for the too much data case because they, they are trivial to generate. Examples for too little data. Um, end of input in a head, end of input in a, a string, in a different length string, end of input in a map or array, uh, indefinite length strings that are not closed, and uh, uh, indefinite length maps and arrays not closed. So these are the cases where the, the pseudocode uh, would run into the take function that is defined in the pseudocode and simply not have data to work with and produce a fail. And the syntax errors, uh, this is a complete list of all the, the first bytes with reserved additional information values. Um, there are reserved two byte encodings of simple types. I have added uh, one example here. Um, Kind three is indefinite length string chunks that are not of the correct type. So this says it's an indefinite length 
a string, but what's in there is a number and not a string. So these need, need to be checked and cause syntax errors. Um, you cannot have indefinite length string chunks that are indefinite length string chunks in turn. So a 5F with another 5F in it, that's not allowed. And that's actually something that my implementations don't check, so I have to fix that. So thank you for the test vectors, Lawrence. Um, kind 4 is a break stop code that is occurring in the wrong place, like completely outside uh, of an indefinite length uh, item or uh, in a definite length array or um, at a place where a, a map has a value position. And finally, we have another set of uh, reserved values that are syntax errors, which are uh, major type 016 with additional information 31. And to the mailing list, I sent a short script that uh, shows how to extract the actual byte strings from the text of this section. Uh, and uh, my version of the script actually runs it against my <coughs> two Ruby Cibo implementations. and uh, they are actually all invalid except for, for the two where my implementation doesn't, uh, excuse me, uh, they are all not well found except for the two where my implementation doesn't find that they are uh, not well found. So uh, the, the normal way I would handle this is um, assign this to Paul who might have another reading of the English uh, language, but of course, if you have any English language comments, please uh, make them here. Uh, and in, in this meeting, we should find out whether this is the, the right approach uh, to do this. Well, this looks really good to me. Um, I, I think it's, uh, yeah, I, I, I have a <laughs> In, in in general, from looking it over, it looks just fine. I mean, it looks really like an improvement. You know, your your way of extracting the the data that seems that seems cool and useful, and definitely m more useful than the tables. Um, and uh, the descriptions are make sense to me as well. Um, the the one thing I am, <clears throat> I'm a little. Uh, unsure about is the on the too much data and the too little data is it, it seems like that depends on if it's a seaboard sequence or just uh, you know intended to be a complete set of seaboard uh, I, I think that's application seaboard right um, and if if it's not a sequence then you 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 definitely know when you have too little data if it if it is a sequence you don't know, and the text doesn't say that. I think I'm using the term CWAR sequence, right? Well, um, if you're talking about too much data, um, th there are other constructions that uh, use a CWAR data item as a header to some binary data that, that immediately follow it. Um, th these are not described in, in this document, but th this is a very valid a way of using Seaborn. and that, that's a similar situation uh, where you have too much data, uh, but that's okay because the, the whole point is uh, using the safety limiting uh, feature of, of, of Seaborn to make that the header uh, for, for the binary data that follows. Uh, so th there are other cases of too much data than the uh, Seaborn sequence uh, case. On the too little data side, yes, you know when you have too little data. Um, and the, the, the whole point of the comment here is to say, uh, well, that, that may not be a fatal error here because it uh, might just be necessary to wait for uh, more data so you no longer have too little data. But, but don't you know whether you're, which, which kind of mode you're operating in? So, you know, yep. So, uh, I mean, it seems like you could say, um, if you know that you have all the data, if all the data has been read and you still have too little data, then you know you, you've got a problem. If you're operating in a mode where you are reading 
data and you, you don't know whether you've read all the data or not, then you don't know. So the, the idea would be to discuss the case where this is an error. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, one one if you feed completely random data into a seaboard decoder, you are actually quite likely to run into too little data because uh, those random data are going to form a head with a preposterous size in it. And uh, yeah. so all you find out is you have too little data. Um, and then you have uh, like 5% syntax errors or so, but 95% but are too little data. So I agree this is, this is uh, a common error if, if you somehow feed the wrong data to, to a CYD decoder. Yeah, I, I also know like in some of the implementations I, I did, um, uh, at first I, I missed some of those errors because um, I didn't uh, have checks at the end of the parsing to, to particularly to see that all the arrays and maps were closed. Okay, do we have any other comments on this? So I, I will address Lauren's comment discussing the case where this is an error and then ask uh, Paul to review it and merge it. Good. Yes, so good. Let's go to 115. This is actually not uh, pointing to an issue uh, because this is just something we have said in a meeting and, and never uh, recorded. Uh, so basically the idea is to uh, make quite explicit that the deterministic encoding is uh, uh, um, subset or superset, depending on how you define the set, of preferred serialization. So it, it uh, does more than preferred serialization does. But if you have deterministic encoding, you always have preferred uh, serialization, at least with the encoding requirements that are defined in this document. And this also adds some text about the floating point uh, case that, that was brought up by Peter Oxer. So that there's some moving around of text here. The, the request itself is actually much smaller. And there is a word that, that maybe can be improved here. So that, that's a small change, but I think it's it's an editorial improvement. Okay, if there are no comments, then I'll ship this to Paul. Um, number 116, I think we have discussed this a lot. And I finally wrote the text for this. This is actually supposed to address one uh, issue 113, 90, and 91. Um, so uh, first of all, um, I put in a definition for expected input. Maybe we actually want to use this a little more, but uh, I put in the definition now. Um, as usual, we, we are using expected in its English meaning as well. Uh, specifically, we are using it to describe application layer validity. So something that the application uh, thinks is expected as its input. Uh, that is uh, ultimately the goal of all three validation 
uh, steps here, well-formed, valid, and, and expected. So this uh, addresses the three layers of error checking. And uh, then uh, we are not longer talking about strict mode, we are talking about validity checking. Uh, so the, the first reference goes to validity checking now. The uh, section is called validity checking now. And of course, the, the text has changed a bit uh, because we, we are no longer making all these wonderful promises how, how uh, strict mode is going to save the world, but we're focusing on uh, validity uh, checking. And so we know instead of saying a decoder in strict mode, we say something like a validity checking uh, decoder. Um, and we discuss how that interacts with uh, application validation. Um, yeah, so th this needs a good reading as well. Oh, um, yeah, and at the end of the security considerations, uh, this discusses how uh, a generic decoder cannot actually do the, the third level uh, check. Um, in particular, um, since the, the set of defined tag numbers evolves, you may be in a situation where the application uses a tag number that the generic decoder doesn't know about yet. So it's, it's typically not an error uh, if the application gets a tag that the generic decoder doesn't know about, uh, it just means all the checking needs to be done in the application then. So this text is currently in the security considerations. We may want to move this uh, up, but I think it also can be done here. So Lawrence, uh, according to Carsten, this should close your three issues that, that are, um, yeah, uh, 130, 90, and 91. So it would be great if you had time to read this through and see if it makes sense or if you, um, if you're satisfied. Yeah, um, it looks pretty close, um, but I. I uh, uh, I want to read it in the, the full context and, and, and yeah. have a, a little bit of time to think about it. So. I'll just add that in the minutes as an AP for you. Okay. Why can Thanks. I not put this into... Maybe uh, Lawrence is not part of the CBOR uh, organization or... Yeah, can you fix that? I can take a look. I can take a look. So maybe uh, just put in the, the, the action for me to do a review request then. Okay. Yeah, and this should also uh, close 45. Um, so 45 now has, can we close this uh, label? And this also addresses uh, 67, uh, but maybe we need a little bit more work on 67, so I am not yet proposing to close this. But we, we are close to closing it. Okay, that was 116. Uh, 117 is a kind of a specialty item because it's about this JSON to CBOR conversion number range issue that Peter also uh, brought up. Explicit of proposing a default range that is the iJSON range, but also suggesting that there are various other ranges that applications might want to choose. And uh, then it 
uh, puts more detail into the discussion of the floating point conversion because decimal to binary conversion is a, a rather complicated uh, subject. Uh, so I think this should address Peter's uh, uh, comments. Uh, can I then review to Peter? No. Do you know what his, do you remember what his uh, GitHub um, ID is? I can just add him or invite him. Yes, it's Peter O P O U P C. Okay. Peter O U P C. Now I'm inviting him and. Great. When he accepts, then we can add that. Okay, so I add an AP person to request review from Peter. Right. So I, I, I'm a member now. Oh good. Great. So you can already assign or yeah if you want to do if you want to keep track like that. Otherwise it's in the minutes. So which one is it? One sixteen viewers There we are. Okay. And finally, number 86. Let me try to remember what that is. Oh, yeah. That, that's the old issue. Uh, why do we check embedded MIMBA but not embedded CBO? And uh, we, we had a couple of uh, uh, interims where we had discussed this. And my proposal is to do two things. First of all, for the embedded uh, CBO data item, change the validity rule. Uh, so instead of saying any contained byte string is valid, even if it's ill-formed, I think that that's uh, pretty weird. Um, a contained byte string is valid if it encodes a well-formed SIBO item, uh, but there is no validity checking of the embedded SIBO uh, item, even though this could be offered as an option by a generic decoder. So this is one point. This is an actual technical change. And uh, for tag 36, where we wondered whether that is why that is stricter than the CBO item, even though it's much more work to implement it, um, I put in a sentence that says uh, validity checking is particularly onerous and might thereby, therefore not be offered. So this is not a technical change. It's just uh, setting expectations. Uh, given that generic decoders are free to choose which tags they validate and which they don't, uh, this gives a little bit of license uh, uh, to an implementation not to do validity checking on uh, my messages. This particular tag is also damaged by the fact that we uh, incorrectly said it, it must contain a text string, so there's even another tag uh, for binary my messages. Anyway, but it's there, so we should fix it. Okay, that's a small thing, but the, uh, for once it's a technical uh, change to require more uh, validity uh, checking. Validity checking for the SIBO item is checking that it's well formed. Um, but I think that that's something that you really would expect a decoder to do. I mean, typically it's going to offer the em embedded SIBO uh, item as a decoded SIBO uh, item. For that, it needs to do a well-formed check anyway. 
uh, so this is the typically not not really additional uh, work. Okay, eighty six. Who was the submitter of that? Oh, I was okay. Good. That's the set of pull requests, and uh, these should close some seven issues, or at least get them closer to closing. And I think there are a couple more issues that that we can um, address with uh, small amounts of additional text. So I hope we actually can uh, significantly reduce the number of issues in the next couple of weeks. Let's go to the issues for a moment. So 107, I think, can be closed, but uh, the, there should be one more uh, reading. The not a number and subnormal number thing, uh, this still says help wanted. Um, the relative order, that requires some text, not much, but some text. Um, this, I think, could be closed. So, uh, Lawrence, uh, can you have a look at these two and see whether we can close them? That's number... 71 and 45. Yeah. And there, there were a few items uh, by Jeffrey that, that I think are all editorial, but I didn't do my big editorial roll up. So this is still outstanding. And finally, 16 is, is a task and, and not related to working with us calling the document. So I think we are pretty close, but there, there, there's still work to do. So the goal uh, was to get a version, the next version by um, the next interim in two weeks. Yeah, um, it was supposed to be a version we can work with less call. Yes. Uh, the goal continues to be to close all issues by that time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so hopefully, if Lawrence has time to do this, uh, we can continue the discussion also with Peter and, uh, and Jeffrey uh, in the mailing list. Um, if they don't, yeah. Yeah, I think it's best to engage Jeffrey again when uh, uh, we actually have text addressing his four issues down yeah. here. Yeah. And, uh, so, you, uh, so you work on that text in the meantime? Yes. Yeah, good. And it looks pretty clear to me. Just needs to be done, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. Small matter of editing. <laughs> Do we have any other comments about this? Anything anybody wants to bring up about the C4 specification? Well, it seems like it's uh, it's moving along to me. Yes. Michael, is there anything you want fixed before we stitch this up? Uh, he may not be listening. I don't know about the sleep cycle, but he's in Germany right now, and I think he's working at the wrong day of time. <laughs> time of day, sorry. Oh. Okay. <laughs> 
Or maybe he's just muted. Forgot to unmute. And he says no via text. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I guess that's the answer to the first question, Kasten. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Okay. okay. I think you're done. Any other business? Anybody wants to bring up? If not, then we can close the meeting and we'll talk again in two weeks. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for Thank joining. You. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.